All right, cool. So, uh, hey, everybody. I'm uh, Maxi, and uh, we'll be talking about DNSSEC today, which is uh, talking about DNSSEC. Real quick, show of hands, who here knows what DNSSEC is? Like, you know, you have an idea. Okay, cool. Uh, who here has ever uh, played with it at all, like given it a shot to install? Okay, what, did you succeed? That was the next question. Hit or miss? Uh, that's about uh, that's about average, <laughs> which is part of why I want to do the talk. So, a uh, little bit about me. Um, as I said, I'm Maxi I'm Thomas Clements. I work at Dell SecureWorks, so that's not relevant because I did this all in my own time. I've uh, been doing this shit for 12 years. I guess I should jump to the bottom where this says this is rated PG-13. I will use foul language from time to time. Uh, it's just who I am. Um, my, I, my first Freaknik was the same as not Larry's. It was Freaknik 4. That was in, well, 12 years ago, obviously. Um, I did speak at Freaknik 7 about uh, my experience. I'd been in computers for about three years, so that experience was really stupid, uh, or I guess ignorant. However, uh, the talk went very poorly. I was very nervous. Um, I am nervous now as well. I don't know. I don't do well at public speaking, and that's part of the thing. I, I had one, actually, during uh, aesthetics and talk. So. Thank you, baby. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, why I'm here, as I just said, actually, let me stop. I'll tell a joke. So uh, yeah, jokes are good because they make you less nervous. Well, I want to relate to you people, and that's another part of this. Anyways, you, you, you people. Yeah. You know what I mean. You know who you are. OK. Um, <laughs> pretty good, yeah. So um, I, I, thought, I thought a lot about a good joke. Because uh, you know, you're supposed to tell a joke to kind of break the ice and get everybody on your side. And I, and I, I looked. I mean, I Googled for jokes about DNS. And you know, not, not a lot out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, certainly not a lot with any kind of you know, authority that I wanted to bring across or that would appeal across multiple zones. Sorry, I had to do that. Um, <laughs> uh, so I did actually settle on a uh, TCP UDP joke. And then, because um, it's relevant to DNS, for those who know about DNS. Um, and the more I thought about it, I, I realized that uh, this joke, it really wasn't a joke as much as, much as it was a, a sexist ob observation on my part. And that is that I've determined that men are like UDP and women are like TCP. And I can give you some examples. Uh, men are very direct. They just want to get shit done, get it over with, and, and that's it. Whereas women, you know, they want acknowledgement. They want, they want you to have an established relationship with you. Um, and, and, it, and at least in my case, uh, they may talk about a three-way, but all you ever get is a handshake. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know. All right, good. Um, so, so the reason I wanted to do this talk was uh, <laughs> uh, was mostly because I want you all to love me, okay? For two reasons. One is because yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Um, so uh, I, I want you to like me for two reasons. One, as I said, I, I sucked at giving a talk. I think I suck at giving talks, to be honest. Um, all right, thanks. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, the second, the second reason is because, um, well, I had just gotten this all done. I, DNSSEC was working for me, and uh, Freaknik's, uh, Freaknik, Will Pig's like, uh, "Hey, golf for papers for Freaknik," and I'm like, "Well, I just did this shit. I, you know, maybe I could talk about it." Um, and it wasn't easy. And uh, I realized that the more I can get this across to, the, the more people I can convince to try this, the better off the entire internet is. So I thought, who better than to, a bunch of geeks to try to get them to try and set up DNSSEC on their own. Um, so let me make sure I cover everything in my freaking slide. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't easy. Um, I got it all working as I thought and realized I'd missed an entire step and had no idea how it worked in the first place. Um, there was no good documentation, just a second, um, that I could find online that covered every bit of the whole process. And so I, you know, maybe I didn't, my Google food may have sucked, but I, I couldn't quite get, you know, I couldn't find it all myself and ended up having to piecemeal it all together from multiple sources. Yes? It's com. Okay. Um, it's maxiz.com is the one I, I was using, so. Um, and I'll get into poor adoption. Uh, that's why I want you guys to help me adopt this. Get this out here. Get it working on the domains you have access to, if, you, if you're willing. Um, and, and finally, I want to say this is the most important slide of the whole damn talk. I am going to talk about DNS. I am going to talk about DNSSEC. 
Um, you, you may not even like hearing about that. But what I do want you to know about is that if, if I die of a heart attack or lightning strikes me right here and now, you guys, please go look at this. It's, it's kind of fun, and uh, it makes the whole thing better, right? So that's it. Um, I am going to cover DNS, and I'm sorry. I, I imagine most people in the room know what DNS is and how it works, at least uh, to the key point. But I, it's, it's really hard to have this talk without talking at least about what DNS is. Um, so it's a simple request and reply mechanism. It generally uses UDP. As I said, it's direct. It doesn't have established relationships. So we, you know, it's, it's, it's very uh, masculine. Um, it is, uh, DNS is a core service of the internet. And I can't stress this enough. Um, I, d I did this talk once uh, in a small setting just to kind of feel it out. And when we were done, um, I had people coming up to me going like, yeah, but how does it stop spear phishing? And I'm like, uh, yeah, not at all. In fact, it might make sure that the spearfish can actually definitely get to you. Um, so, uh, you, you know, basically, anytime you go anywhere, how many people just surf the internet only by typing IPs? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, you know, it, anytime you take, take a domain and it resolves to an IP, that's DNS doing that for you. And that happens all the time, every email, every Twitter, every web page. So. Um, yeah, the most, yeah, that's the most common example. These are a quick list of domain uh, record types. I'm not going to read them off. They're up there for you. Uh, all of these are quite old except for the bottom one, which is uh, the IPv6 uh, IP address record. Uh, sort of. I'm, all right, so uh, this is a quick and, and uh, overly simple uh, picture of how DNS works. Um, you want to go to Google, so you, you ask the root servers. Everybody familiar with the root servers? There's 13 ish of them. There's 13 I names and 13 IPs. Yes? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, and uh, so they tell you where to go, who to go talk to about Google. And they say, go talk to ns1.google.com, which is represented by that. And then we go and we ask Google for an A record, and then it comes back with 1.2.3.4, whatever, okay? Makes sense? Any questions? Okay, thanks. Um, so what's the problem with that? I mean, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Well, the problem is it's, it's masculine, as I said. So it's, uh, we, there's no established relationship. It's all like, hey, what, what is it? Just like, hey, back. It's easy to spoof. It's easy to DDoS uh, because of that lack of it. So you can spoof the IP, and then, you know, one, one box can send DNS queries to your DNS server uh, from a bunch of different uh, made-up IPs. And you really have no way to deal with that other than like filtering up upstream and or uh, just, uh, what a, damn, lost my train of thought right in the middle of that. <laughs> uh, by filtering it upstream or shutting off your DNS server or, you know, something like that, which is usually not a good option. Um, it does have TCP failover. Uh, if, if a packet is really big, it will try that. Some, some DNS uh, resolvers will try TCP when UDP fails. But uh, TCP is really not a good solution to the problem because it has a lot of overhead. Uh, those women like to talk a lot. So, um, you know, as they're setting up the established relationship and all that overhead makes the entire conversation a lot more noisy. And because of that, it would make the internet slow down that much more. Um, so DNS clients really have no means of validating that that's right. Uh, they they have a nonce in the request. Uh, it's 16 bits, and um, they, that that is the only authentication currently going on. That was added later, even after the original protocol. Um, and then I want to bring up a DNS changer. This was a botnet that was shut down in July of this year. Um, it's a little off topic because really this DNS uh, sec doesn't really stop uh, host file changes. However, it does. Um, this was a botnet that went around changing the IPs in your host file and sent people all over the internet to various locations. So you would th think you were going to Google and it would send you to some website that they chose and you could, uh, you know, spam you, infect you with malware, whatever, and, and you had not, so obviously there's value in changing your DNS. And so DNS cache poisoning. Um, DNS cache poisoning is simply when we ask the name server, we, we say, you know, who's Google? It says go to ns1.google.com. We say, hey, give me an, uh, the A record, which is IP. An attacker sends a reply. Google sends a reply, too. But if the attacker comes in first and has a correct nonce, uh, then the, there's no real way for your DNS server to know the difference. And so you end up, uh, your DNS server, your local DNS server, and or your computer, depending on how you're doing it, uh, ends up holding bad information. And because DNS is cached, 
it can hold that for a little bit of time. Um, and depending on how many people share your DNS server, that could be you know a day, however that much they set the, t the attacker sets your TTL. And so he can end up t stealing all the traffic destined for a site and sending it to the IP of his choosing. Uh, who did anybody see the um, on the network on the data talk yesterday? Yeah, uh, that that he was talking about layer two, uh, uh, stealing you know your ARP, and I'm sure people know about that kind of. Uh, man manipulation you can do on a local network. This is kind of manipulation you can do on TCP IP, you know, up the, up the next level. Any questions on that? I'm going to talk a little bit more about cache poison, but the flow, okay. Um, I like this question. Raise your hand if you were born after 1990. Anyone? No? Would you mind standing up? Thank you. <laughs> His entire life, DNS, uh, DNS cache poisoning has been an issue. Right, he needs to sit down. Sorry, I just wanted to point that out, how crazy that an attack, uh, a threat like that could go on. Um, I think I explained that well enough. Uh, Dan Kaminsky in, uh, at Black Hat in 2008 uh, had been studying a botnet. I don't remember which one. Uh, it was communicating over DNS, and um, at, he... he as he was looking into this, he began to realize there were a lot of problems in, with the way we were doing DNS at that time. Um, and, and those problems were mostly around the fact that that 16 bits, you know, we're, we're doing 16 bits of random entropy on virtual machines, um, and, and we're not getting a lot of entropy. And so it was very easy to, to do this DNS cache poisoning, as well as the source IP on several of these were also used as a factor, in, and the, I mean the source port, sorry. And the source port was often 53, even the same IP, uh, same port you would use to query DNS in the first place. Uh, so everyone kind of freaked out that year. I don't know if you if uh, you were paying attention. And everybody was like, "Oh my God, we need DNS sec. Where is it? This is terrible. Uh, let's get this shit solved. This is terrible." And uh, then everybody went out and fixed it, and uh, it's no longer an issue. So yay. No, I'm kidding. That's, <laughs> that didn't happen at all. We kind of fixed some of that uh, random number generation. We changed the source ports around, and then we all just went back to sleep. Um, so how does DNSSEC help? Uh, what DNSSEC does uh, in, in, in an overview is asymmetric cryptography, and it signs the records. Um, so that when you get them, you, you can get a public key, and it's signed by the private key, uh, and you can confirm that the record that you get is valid. That's, that's all it does. There's nothing, there's no uh, you know, CIA, there's no confidentiality in that, right? It's, it's only integrity and, well, non-repudiation, I guess. Repudiation, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> uh, this was originally created in '97, um, and it kind of really sucked. Uh, the design wasn't uh, was was kind of backwards, and so they redid it in 2004 to kind of make it a little less sucky, um, not really relevant. Uh, it introduces two new um, four node rec record types: the DS record, which is a uh, essentially a hash of the DNS key. Um, there's two DNS keys. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Um, and uh, there's the RRSIG and the NSEC. The, these were the original ones. There's also an NSEC 3, but, but that's not, we'll get into that in a second, too. Um, the uh, RRSIG is what actually signs the zones, or the record types. Uh, so your A record would have an RRSIG. You have a zone signing key, and you have a key signing key. And the, the zone signing key signs the, uh, the, the record and puts an RRSIG. And the key signing key signs your zone signing key. I know that's convoluted and stupid, and, and it'll make sense in a minute. Okay, so another important thing to understand is a trust anchor. And you can think of this as kind of like the CA that you trust. It's, it's, you got you to gotta trust somebody, right? And uh, so the idea of this is that you trust the root, meaning dot, meaning the 13 root level name servers, if you will. Um, so what you end up doing is you end up trusting that key, and it signs down a chain that I'm going to show you in a second, all the way down to the RRSIG record that you get. Um, so the uh, key signing key and zone signing key are both DNS key types. Let's see if there's anything else on here I need to cover before I move on. Yeah, and the DS records are ha you know their hash is like SHA one of the, uh, the the key signing key. All right, so this is a picture. Is that? Can everybody see that? I have to break this up into two parts. Raise your hand if you can't, if you can't read all of that. Okay, thank you. Well, you're in the front row, so <laughs> awesome. Okay, good. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks, Johnny. Um, 
No, 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 no. You don't really have to read the words, but I do want to, I'm going to get into a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So this is my domain, maxiz.com. And uh, you see I have a, the, the gray box at the top is the DNS key. Um, the algorithm means the, uh, yes? Can we ignore that part right there? Yes. But it's not really classified. I just didn't label it. Okay. This is, I just did it on my computer. I that's all. Oh, no, no, no. This is, they don't, this is all my stuff. They don't care. Um, MaxiZ.com, I can assure you they don't know that. <laughs> so the, the, gray, the gray key at the top is just the, uh, is the uh, key signing key for my, my domain. I mean, yeah, the key signing key for my domain. These are both zone signing keys. One is active, one is not. And the reason for that is so that they can roll over. And so what ends up happening is because DNS caches everything on the other end, you don't want to have a bad chain where it's cached incorrectly. Um, and then these are the records that I have that are signed there. Um, and then going up, this is uh, the part from here up, where I was just at, here. No? OK. Well, I'm trying to show you both, right? So this is the very, the very top root. Let me get a ledger pointer. So this is the root. Uh, this is my trust anchor. This is a trust anchor. You see the little loop? That means it's a trust anchor. So uh, this is the, uh, damn it, I keep saying it wrong. The key signing key, zone signing key, the DS for the zone below it. Key signing key, zone signing key, DS for the zone below it. Make sense? Any questions about that? That's, so that's how you establish your trust. You have to have the trust anchor on, on the resolving name server. It signs, it, it gets a hash of the, you know, it has the, it has the, the key. It then signs, it, it trusts it all the way down to confirm that the public key was signed all the way down. Any questions? Okay. I uh, want to quickly go over these two flags. Uh, this is part of the protocol, um, and it's a little technical, but the DO is uh, DNSSEC OK, which means, hey, I'd like to do DNSSEC. Instead of having to ask for the RSEC records and the DS records, that one flag tells the DNS. Uh, server that you want to do, go up the chain doing DNSSEC. And then uh, you have the AD, which stands for Authenticated Domain, and that's a, that's a bit that's said in the reply that says, not only is it, here's your domain information, but I also validated that it is correct, so useful for you to know. Um, talk about adoption. Uh, the root, meaning the very top dot, was signed in um, 2010, so that's two years after Black Hat. Uh, so it took that long before we could even actually have a chain of trust all the way down. Um, the TLDs, I uh, got this uh, in um, uh, October. I, I pulled a report and see October 17th, there were 94 top level domains that were signed. Uh, in in uh, July, there were 89. So we're getting about five every three months. Um, I figured I did some math as, at this current rate, we'll, we'll have them all signed in 11 years. So good, good stuff. Uh, the, the, most of the ones in, for the U.S. domains are signed. Com signed, EU signed. Dot uh, mills recently signed this year. Um, let's see, uh, the ones that aren't that you might run into are like dot tv, dot moby, dot name isn't signed, but but the rest of them are. And the rest of them that really need to be signed are like you know like Russia, right? You know, so so lots of foreign domains that need to be signed. Um, so when you get down to who's actually using this, well, I, I can't find much. Um, I'm running a, a tool called uh, DNSSEC Validator. Da, 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 da. Yes, this DNSSEC Validator for Firefox and uh, Chrome. And uh, it, it will basically show you that you, tr you got a trusted domain when you go to a web page. And so I've been running this for a while. And, you know, granted, I don't surf every part of the Internet because, you know, that, that would get me in trouble with my wife. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, some of the domains that I do see uh, out there on the internet that are signed are defcon.org. Very important domain to have defcon.org uh, signed. Um, not that I don't, nothing against defcon. I love defcon. We're a defcon shirt. Uh, but, uh, you know, not, not, not financial business impacting to the, uh, to the internet at large. Comcast.net. Uh, and I, I want to give a shout out to Comcast in general. Uh, they are very forward thinkers over there. They're doing IPv6. Uh, they're heading the pack as far as cable goes, as far as I'm concerned. Um, strikes are out. Six strikes? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, they're also they're also got a DNSSEC resolver already, um, and, and they've done their domain. So I don't think they did Comcast.com, but they did Comcast.net. 
So, um, Debian.org, that's, that's actually a useful one. Um, IANA.org, and then MaxiZ.com. So, you know. All right. So, so who's not signing their domains? Well, I, I, I can't find anybody else signing their domains. Uh, you go to banks. I, I tried finding every bank I could think of. None of them had DNS. So. Uh, I tried, uh, you know, Gmail, Google, you know. Yeah, you know, other big forward thinkers on the internet. Nobody's signing their their zones. Yahoo is signed. Yahoo is signed? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have not seen that, but uh, and I believe I've checked that. But I, I'll check again. Um, oh yes, that is totally different. Okay. Yeah. No, they they are not. I they don't, they are not signed. Um, Okay, so why isn't everybody jumping on this bandwagon? And while I'm trying to get you guys to do this, I, I want to tell you, I want to be honest with you, I want you to know why, you know, it might be a little hard. Um, first of all, and the big one is money, right? It's, it always is. So, uh, and, and the money issue is, is, is on several factors. If it's my domain and it's my time, it's my energy, it's really not expensive at all. If you're talking about redesigning your infrastructure at work and you have, oh, I don't know, 20 name servers, that might take some time and effort. Also, if you are supporting a huge number of domains. Let's say you are a hosting company, like the one uh, Johnny and I used to work at, that had like millions of domains. How much crypto horsepower are you going to need to sign a million domains? You know, uh, it's, it's, it can be quite extensive. Um, so, so there is some cost to that. Uh, if, if you're talking about hosting or doing DNS for something with, I don't know, I'd say more than 2,000 records, uh, I, you, you know, you, you may want to get look into getting a cryptographic card on board or something, uh, if you want to try this. Um, there's a, a vulnerability that came out about InSec, and it's a pretty obvious vulnerability. Uh, when, you, when you actually ask for a domain that doesn't exist, you want to have a signed response that says it doesn't exist. However, you don't want a signed response that says nothing here, because then you could just replay that all the time, and somebody would say, I want to see Google, and you'd be like, nothing there. <laughs> so <laughs> it would essentially lead you to a client-side DOS, I guess, as it was. I just, I never heard of that before. I just made that up. Um, so uh, uh, insect, and so what they did instead is they, they enumerate the zone, and they go from, like, let's say it's a.com, and then you go to c.com. So when you look for b.com, you get a response that says, a signed response that says, there's nothing here until c.com, okay? So the problem was, by, by going through the entire zone, you could quickly figure out what was all in the zone. Some people feel that that's bad. They want to put public information into their internet-facing DNS. Just lost sound. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, you know, that, that's a bit of a problem. And, uh, so, you know, I, I've, I've heard some... Uh, Companies out recently who who they've had some sensitive private information in their DNS, so it, it can happen that, uh, that 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 is a concern to you. And if that's the case, there's a solution called Insect Three. Though I'll be talking about that here because uh, the tools I'm using don't support it. Um, but uh, what it does is it hashes that response and says, "Then there's nothing here until the SHA-1 hash of c.com," which is essentially useless to anyone looking at it. But it me it gives you an answer that can't be replayed. Cool. Um, registrar support. Well, domain support first. As I said, we've only got, what, 94 TLDs? I think since I did that report, there was one more. I think it was Malaysia got into the route. So if you got a Malaysia domain, you're, you're solid. Um, yeah. Why couldn't you replay that? If the hash is... Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But I know they fixed it with Insect 3. I can't quite recall. And uh, when you're asking me questions and I'm nervous, I can't think. So I, I can't really, I can't, I can't solve problems. This man needs alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I said that yeah. I, when, in my talk at Freednik 7, someone asked me a question about uh, why can't we store passwords uh, encrypted on the server and then decrypt them and then use salt. And I was just like, well, that's... You're a freaking genius. You know, that's the most in, in, amazing thing. Why didn't we think of that? And then, of course, like, as soon as I turned off the mic, I was like, oh, well, duh, we can't decrypt them, you know. Anyways, that's the whole point. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, so domain support is, is, a, is an issue. Uh, registrar support. You have to have a registrar that can put the, D the DS key records, I'm sorry, into the zone above you. And in the case of, say, maxiz.com, you have to get your DS records into com. And so 
Yeah, I, I don't have the authority, traditionally, normally, to, to edit the top-level root 13 name servers. So in order to do that, you have, your registrar has to have permission to do that, and you have to have a registrar that supports that. I'm going to give a shout-out to gkg.net. Uh, they, they are a registrar. They're, they're pretty good pricing. They do privacy, um, and they do, um, and obviously, they do DNSSEC. Uh, GoDaddy also does that. Uh, they they try to. I haven't actually tried this with GoDaddy, but they do advertise it. I'm afraid they're trying to lock you into using their own DNS servers. Not 100% on that, but but they may very well do that pretty well. Yeah. That that what? I'm pretty sure they do support DNS site. Yes. Uh, the registrar itself. Well, you you'd have to enable it. I don't know if you have to pay extra for it, but I I do know that they have it. Uh, or at least advertise that they have it. Uh, <laughs> Unless they pulled it off. I know they did have it. Okay. Uh, crypto is hard. We, we kind of covered that with the... Uh, uh, shit. Uh, with the, uh, with uh, putting the hardware crypto cards in your, your machine. If you had to do this kind of math all the time, that could be difficult. Also... Can you imagine how many, you know, well, you don't have to generate random numbers here. Well, yeah, you do. Hold on. I'm trying to think on that. Never mind. I'm not going to think on that because then I won't think right. Um, you do it for the, you have to have an IV for that? Shut up. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, you don't need an IV. Okay, um, I don't think. Anyways, um, return on investment. Why, why should I spend all this money to do DNSSEC on, in, in my house? when the rest of the internet isn't supporting it. If I get a DNSSEC uh, resolving name server, well, woo, I can go to maxiz.com and defcon.org, and, and I'm solid. Uh, but you know, the rest of the internet's a complete wash as far as this goes. Um, what about uh, the other way? You can go ahead and add it to your zone. You can spend the time and money and, and energy to get this set up on your, on, in your own DNS servers, and then what? Who's gonna validate it? So uh, you know, it's, it's, this is a two-way street, which is why I need you guys to uh, Think this is fun and, and go try it yourself. Um, and then finally, like I said, I uh, originally I, I had took me a long time to figure out how to do this and even how to understand how it worked. Um, again, my Google Foo may not be what it is. I'm, I'm much more at home in the command line. But uh, I I spent like you know I had to like read this page and then figure out how to do it from there and then go and find out what I was missing on this part and then go research that and then you know repeat until I got all the answers. You have a question? Sort of. Sort of. Okay. Yep. I'm not sure I understood your question. I'm sorry. I, I, I you know, Akamai may go ahead. Yep. But uh, what if your what if your domain is hosted by like Akamai? Is Akamai host is Akamai DNSSEC uh, signing your domain, and then you follow the chain from your domain to Akamai up to the root server? No. Yeah, I'm okay. So I, I that yeah that your question shows that I I uh, didn't clearly explain that. So let me um let me clearly cover this up. So this top one is dot. Okay. This is com. And then this is maxi.com, maxiz.com. And if I had a third level domain, like test.maxiz.com, it would be down here. And then, and then I would have the DS record for it up here. Does that make sense? No, so they, they, if, if they had like maxiz.akamai.net, then, then yes, they would they would have to do that for me. But if it was, you know, if they're just hosting my domain, if maxiz.com is a, a forwarder to them or something like that, then th that's really a domain change, right? It goes from maxiz.com to 1345.akamai.net.
Uh, the only time I've ever seen, and I've never actually used Akamai, but I have used several other CDNs in my days. Um, the only time I've ever seen them do that is either where you set up a domain and they have an IP that you point to, or they uh, have a domain of their own and then you just kind of redirect or use their name. Um, and then if it's your third level domain, then you would be part of your chain here for your domain. And if it's theirs, then it'll be part of their chain. And so if you and then, then as to whether or not Akamai is actually signed or not, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I, Akamai is not something I notice normally while I'm on the internet anyway, so that would be kind of hard uh, for me to answer without you know, researching their domain. If we had internet access, it's easy to tell, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, so what tools are out there to do this? Um, and, and you know, Windows, I have to give them credit too. Uh, Windows 2012, uh, uh, there's a video I can share with uh, people that uh, it, it's, it's this other guy from Windows who's like in charge of their DNS uh, doing a talk about how they, they do it. Um, and uh, maybe he explains it better than I do. I don't know. Hopefully you guys all get it. If not, uh, tell me where I went wrong and I'll, I'll answer any questions. Um, what he does is he, uh, for, but he, in Windows 2012, they have NSSEC 3. It's a wrap. You know, I mean, uh, you know, so it's pretty easy to do in, in, in Windows uh, 2012. Um, you do, of course, have to get a registrar. You do have to have a valid domain that's, that's as I said, and you have to submit your DS record from there. A um, couple other names uh, in the Linux world, by 9.7 up. 9.7 uh, supported with look aside only, if I remember correctly, and you can have a, your own, but it won't do like manage rollover of domain keys and stuff like that. Um, Unbound is a, uh, is a replacement for bind. I never heard about it until I started researching this. Uh, the, the, the pun being obvious because bind and unbound. Uh, PowerDNS also supports it. Um, signing tools, uh, you know, these are pretty obvious. Uh, well, no, they're not obvious what I'm talking about. Uh, DNSSEC tool is a, uh, su a suite of tools that you install on your, your Linux box and then it, it'll just, I'm gonna show you that in a minute actually, uh, that shows you how, that lets you uh, sign your zones. Windows 2008 R2 and Windows 2012 have that built in. Um, OpenDNSSEC is actually an interesting model. They, they actually are a proxy uh, and what they do is they sign your zone and then sign your zone and then you actually talk to them instead as I understood it. I didn't actually get that set up but that's, that was the explanation as I read it. Um, and then there's a couple browser plugins as I mentioned earlier. And I've, I, Flip to this slide just because I want to make sure I said the name right. But uh, it's DNSSEC validator for Firefox and Chrome. Same name. Uh, they work slightly differently, but you basically just get a little green box up in your URL window and it says, you're good, or you're not. Uh, what's up? So, um, is, is, am I just by like, default using DNSSEC on, let's say, Debian.org? No. Unless you have a resolving name server that, that understands how to do DNSSEC, then, then you're not. Well, Comcast has one, uh, but I don't know of anybody who's offering a DNSSEC validating service. Uh, so, you know, maybe that's a that's a good idea. Maybe somebody could do that. I would obviously be up for some attacks and so stuff. My, my, I'm, I'm saying my, my Debian machine. Mm -hmm. right? How do I make it talk to Debian.org using DNSSEC? I I'll show you in a second. Actually, how about that? Because uh, I'm about to, the the talk is uh, I'm using um, Backtrack and. Uh, and Debian, so it's pretty easy. Uh, any other questions before I move on? Okay. So here we are, actually. That was, that was quick. Um, so sit back and watch me demo. Uh, real quick, uh, before I move out of this, uh, the tools I'll be using are Zone Signer, which is part of the DNSSEC tools, uh, Bind. Um, I'm not actually going to show you Roller D because it's kind of pointless, but what it does Zone Signing Key. The DNS key uh, sign, I mean the key signing key signs the two zone signing keys. It, it manages that roll over for you. If you're not paying attention, it'll just roll them over. It's pretty awesome. All right, uh, that's the backtrack client. So I got a, I got a domain set up. Let me show you the server. Uh, can everybody see that pretty well? I, I, the first time I did this talk, I did it all in CLI and I was, People were like, what, my eyes? You know. So I, uh, I got it all up in X and uh, made the, the font much bigger. And so, okay. Um, so uh, real quick, I just have a myexample.com. I'm just gonna query this locally. And this is just a, as dumb as you could get. 
Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, but it, it's it's pretty simple. DNS uh, instance installation bottom. I'll show you the files in a second. Uh, I have uh, two records that I get uh, right away. I have a put an IPv4 and IPv6 address in there. Both of those are, are silly. <laughs> so uh, they're both on the uh, private space for 127.0.0.0. .0 .0. How many th zeros did I say? Three zeros slash eight. All right. So uh, my configuration um, is as simple as saying I, I have this zone, myexample.com, and I have a, this is a master meaning that it's not a slave, it's not pulling from anything else. Um, and it reads from this file here, which is master underscore zone. And then at myexample.com, we have what looks like a straightforward uh, record. In, um, nothing really exciting here. Uh, you can see the serial is about the only interesting uh, that it's up to 13. That's because I kept playing one. Run around. Um, <laughs> uh, we have a uh, name server record, a text record. Uh, that's SPF record for those who care about such things. Um, there is a NS1. So this is an awesome zone. I mean, you know, if this is on the internet, it'd be pretty cool. We don't have uh, DKIM, but uh, you know, we could get there. Probably partly because I don't have a server. <laughs> All right, so uh, to actually generate uh, the, uh, to actually generate my keys and to sign my zone, you run the command zone sign, and you, you option gen keys will actually generate the keys the first time. And then you, I hope you all realize this is this easy, right? So you type zone to tell it what zone you're talking about, because not everybody names their zone uh, after their file, right? Some people have files made something different than their zone. And, oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't pass the file name. Finally, you put the file that you want to, uh, and uh, it did all the magic. Um, if we look at that file now, in myexample.com.sign, you'll see we have tons of garbage. <laughs> so uh, our one little zone changed from, uh, it, it automatically inc it incremented the serial number, and then it put uh, our, our SIG record, these uh, record types. So we have our start of authority, RSIG, and we have a name, got its own RSIG, so on and so on and so on. Make sense? Any questions? Yeah. If you change the zone, every time you change the zone, you have to uh, run the zone signer again. Um, but you don't do the gen keys option again, because that will overwrite your, your keys. And it will just do all that for you. You do have to do an RNDC reload, though, for Bob. Yeah. It depends on how you configure bind, actually. So that's kind of a complicated question. Uh, it is possible to say myexample.com put like 1.2.3.4.5.myexample.com zone. If they're all part of the same zone as far as bind sees it, then no, you don't. But if you are going to do it, uh, you know, actually, I don't know the answer to that question as I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I thought I did, uh, but then I thought about it. It might try to actually resolve those. So, and since I've never done it, I'm going to say I don't have a clue. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's a good, damn good question. Uh, in fact, let's do that just for shiggles. In fact, let's do both of those for shiggles. So we're going to set up. A, I'm going to edit my zone file again. I'm going to go ahead and update this to 15. Not that it really matters since we haven't done anything. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, what did I say, 1.2? Let's just do that. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a name record. Okay? No, that's not. I get two. Let's make it three. Okay, so I just added a uh, new record. And then I called zone signer without the gen keys. And then if we look at our sign zone again, should see somewhere down at the bottom. Unless I'm crazy. My, yeah, okay. Yeah, it'll actually move it around because of that insect record thing I was talking about, where it'll go between trying to find what, what the next one is. So it does order the zone when it when it signs it. Okay, so it, it did add that. We'll, we'll test that in a second and see what it did. Okay? All right, so uh, because of the way I had the zone set up, I'm actually pointed still at the regular, I guess I should show you that too, uh, the, the regular old zone file. The original one has not been changed in any way. I did just show you this, actually. So uh, all it does is make the new file, the dot sign file. And then uh, if you look at the dot, 
local. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to dot signed. And then I'm going to, let me just show you real quick. Uh, if I do a dig plus DNS sec, uh, myexample.com, and then look at 127.0.1. Oh, I did that wrong, sorry. Uh, we have no, there's no DNS, you don't see the R sec records and all that, right? It's just not there. And then um, now that we have that, I'm going to restart bind. And hopefully magic. We have all of our records there. So now we're not we're not really done. All we've done is create a bunch of uh, cryptographic nonsense uh, that uh, we want to be validated. But so far, all we've done is uh, just just sign them all, and so we can't really validate this. Um, any questions up to this point? Okay. So I'm going to flip to this server, which is on the same network. It's a it's just a DNS uh, server here, and. Uh, I can I can do the same query now, and uh, I can I can see a response. But what you don't see here uh, is uh, a, a validated domain response. You don't see the AD flag. Uh, let me use the pointer here. So up up in this are the flags. You see the flags. The flags means that's where the flags are, and uh, <laughs> you don't we don't have an AD flag, so that means it's not actually validated. Um, and uh, one one more interesting thing I, I think is. Uh, if I ask localhost, let's see if I actually how did I set that up. Uh, I believe that's this server. So I, I have a. Sorry. I guess I don't have bind running on here. Okay. So if I ask my own server, um, I get the same thing. Uh, now technically, I can't actually get an authenticated domain from the the server that's giving you the response because that's kind of like self-signing your own domain. It's it's the you, the same authority. Um, so in order to get this to work, since we don't actually have the internet here, uh, or I don't have the internet here, uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to make a trust anchor for myexample.com on this local name server, and then we'll we'll query it, and it should be able to validate. Um, the first thing I want to show you, though, is a failure, because that's always fun. Um, and so I actually have an old trust key that I made just the same way I showed you guys. And uh, I need to uh, use VI and make this faster. Um, what, what's fun about this, though, is um, if I, if I use this invalid record, I've told my name server that the, I do have a truth, I do have a, a trust anchor that validates that domain. But when I query, I actually get a server fail. That domain doesn't even exist. Okay, so uh, what, what, that's what you see uh, when you have a valid signed zone, or it's, it should be signed, but you get a response that isn't doesn't match. And um, you can actually see that in the logs. But what the other thing. What I really, what I want to do next is I want to make it work, right? So you guys can all see the, the magic that a, those two letters A D, which which means that we actually solved the problem. And so um, what you can do is you come over here, and you can get that out of uh, the myexample.conf dot signed. And let me maximize that so I can actually read it. And so this record here, this is the the zone signing key. Right? I'm sorry, the key signing key. And you grab this record. I'm going to put this uh, in a file and copy it over, which I've done before, as you can all tell, because I didn't want to do a demo and then. Is this RSA encryption? Well, it's actually up to you to configure it. So a lot of these numbers here, uh, you can, you have options. That's what the three and the eight mean. They're they're the size and. I've, I think they're the size and the and the record type. I know that one of them is record. I'm pretty sure eight is the record type. It could, it could be the type of encryption and the type of hash. No, that doesn't make sense. They're just, they're not, they're just public keys. Oh, there you go. Let's see. It was go to hell. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so back, back to our trusted uh, keys on here. Uh, we have myexample.com. I'm going to delete that. That, that go to hell, though, was with zeros for the O's. Yeah, 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 it is. It's important to tell you what. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, it was, mine was frozen earlier. I think that looks good. All right, let's see if this works. Yes, I'm almost done. Unless people ask me a bunch of questions. In fact, if the magic happens, moment of truth, not only do we get a domain, but we see where, where I saw it on my screen. It's there. Ah, here it is. There's our AD. So Woo! we successfully did DNS sec between two computers. Yeah. They said it was impossible. So um, when I when I call, I call this DNS sec today because of uh, Partly because I wanted to give you a status, which I think I have done. It's, it's in pretty poor shape, and we need to get a lot better at it. Uh, I also called it DNSSEC today because, you know, can you do it today? And I think, yeah, you can. Um, assuming you're not in Malay, well, in Russia, <laughs> you, you pretty much can do it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that was pretty much it. Uh, it, it is usable. Uh, that's my summary slide, which I was already going on. It's not usable for everybody, as I said. If you if you have a, if you're hosting like millions of domains, or for some reason you have a million records, I don't know who would do that. Say, um, there's, uh, you can't hear me. Yeah. I could, but then I wouldn't be on the video. Um, sorry. So uh, it's not, as I was saying, it's not usable for people with a bunch of domains. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, and there's a zillion of them, and this is why I can't think when I'm nervous. Uh, but where any company that gives you a third-level little domain, uh, Flickr does that. Uh, damn it, there's Tumblr. Tumblr is a great one. Thank you. Uh, see, brain not working. Yes, useful. Um, yeah. So for most people, you know, I think I think for all of us in our own personal domain, certainly we can do it. Uh, if you can try to evangelize this at your companies, please do. Um, it's it's useful. It makes sure it'll make the internet better. It'll stop, mostly stop DNS cache poisoning. And so uh, you know that's it. Um, if you want to contact me about any questions, if you want help setting this up, I'll be happy to to work with you. Um, there's some contact information. Finally, I want to. I've been growing a mustache. I don't know if you can see it. it kind of blends <laughs> in my. Uh, I've been growing it since November first. It's for uh, prostate and testicular cancer. Um, and uh, it's called. There's a link where you can donate money if you want to to uh, you know. Help men's health. Yeah. Are you for or against prostate and testicular cancer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say I'm against cancer of all, all right, kinds. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a loaded question. All right. Yeah. So one final one final hard question from me. Okay. <laughs> you know, if you let me put the mic down, I can probably do hard questions. But right. sure, go for it. So like, <laughs> with uh, Stuxnet, they've proven that with the um, update mechanism that they were able to spoof. You're talking about flame, but yes. Right. Okay. Flame, stuffs. Yep. So are you also finding now, and maybe you haven't done this for in-depth research yet, that you can also do those same level MD5 hash birthday attacks uh, against DNSSEC for domain validation? You could. You, let's see. Could you do that? How could you do that? Yeah, see, that's a hard question, and I don't know. i got to think of the chain. So essentially, the DS records are hashes, so they can be SHAs. They could be MD5. Um, if they are MD5, then could you, you know, find a collision? Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure how, I mean, you would have to, I guess, intercept COM. Uh, you'd have to intercept root, and you'd have to get, make sure that all those were invalid all the way down, right? I, I believe that's right. Um, Again, if I wasn't speaking in public and feeling nervous, then I would uh, be better to answer that. Yeah, what you got, right. so I don't have anything to drink. Oh, I do have a beer over here. Wait, what? what? You yeah. No, I, I got one over here. It's good. Yeah. So, thinking of compromising domains, <laughs> you, you said that the difference between your demo and the real world is that your registrar would have to submit your domain keys to the root server. Uh, the comm server, or well, your, t your TLD, where you bought the, do what, what your domain is a sub of, okay. of what they're selling. Right. So when the U.S. government seizes a domain, 
Yep. How would DNSSEC help against this or prevent it or at all? Like, could they just create new DNSSEC keys for that domain? Uh, you mean like they were trying to manipulate the domain? Well, I really don't, I don't, I don't know what you're getting at, because if they have access to the root, they can do whatever the hell they want to, too. So, I mean, uh, yeah, they can shut you off, certainly, and they could, re they could set up DNSSEC on a alternate domain, the name server, and then, and then set up the chain to go to that, if they really wanted to do that. But at this point in time, that would be silly. All they have to do is pull your NS server records out of the, the comm zone anyway, so it's not really that hard. I don't see this being any, I mean, I think it'd be just, I, you're, you're probably right, it would be easier in the sense that you usually have two NS records and you'd only have one DS key, but <laughs> it's not really that much, that, that much of a difference. Yeah, Tom. Yes. Everything has to be right on both sides. Yes. You, you can, I, I personally, not on this laptop, this is my work laptop, but um, on my uh, personal laptop, I, I run my own DNS server. I validate off that local DNS server. And it, it go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, if you tell them that they're signed, and if they, they're not signed at all, there's no record for them, then you just get the record as is. You, you just don't, you don't get the AD, right? You don't get the authenticated domain flag. So, so you would get the record, but you wouldn't know, it wouldn't give you, obviously, stuff that doesn't exist. And so you would, you would get a, just a, an answer. However, it, it, if I go into my domain right now and I pull out all my DNS keys and RSIGs and stuff, I, my, my domain will go down. I mean, for, for me anyways, for no one else, but for me, it would go down. Yeah. Okay. What's up? Okay. Brandon, the most excellent Iron Geek will have this talk online very, very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. But um, where's your back and your walkthrough? My f frequently asked questions on my walkthrough? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you should make them. Okay. Put them online. A walkthrough of how to do this? Of, of, of the demo, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's that I, a good idea. Uh, I'm sorry I made it look too easy. Okay, yeah, it, it is easy. It's just very poorly documented. Yeah. We'll fix that. Okay. Yes. What's the process for revoking the NSX? Yeah. You, that's a good point. And uh, do I have time to cover that? It's not. Okay. Uh, so, so what you do is you have a. a and that's why that whole stupid chain of uh, you have a key signing key and a zone signing key. And very brilliant people came up with this. And me calling it stupid, they probably want to slap me. But um, it, it seems overly complicated, but it's really not. Uh, it, or it has a purpose anyways. Uh, the, key, the key signing key signs your zone signing key. And so if you have to revoke your key signing key, which shouldn't happen very often, but if you're compromised, it could, then you'd have to re-sign your whole zone and submit your DS at your registrar. That would be bad, but it's bad anyway. Something happened that was... You, the, you're not supposed to use the key signing key that often. The only time you ever use it is to sign the zone signing keys. And that's, that's really the, the division. The, the reason the zone signing keys, uh, they recommend a failover. I don't know if you saw it in the, if you go back and look at the demo, I guess. Uh, it's, a, it's only valid for like four weeks. And the reason for that is because it's used to do uh, uh, asymmetric crypto, which is, which is hard, and, and you're signing every zone in there. And so it's, it's, asymmetric would be a lot smoother, I think. But a lot, a lot stronger, definitely. And, and since it's, it's asymmetric and, and you're signing every one of those zones as possible, people could figure out you know, more information. Get your private key, essentially. So, so that's why you don't want it out there that long. Does that answer the question? The zone signing key. So the zone signing key, there's a daemon called Roller D and, and Windows 2000 will, and 2000, sorry, Windows 2008 R2 and Windows 2012 will roll these over as for you as well. But what, it, what they do is they follow like your zone signing key and when it's set to expire, they automatically make, re-sign the zone with the other zones, the new zone signing key, and then put, expire the old one, add a new one, so on. Okay. Make sense? So zone signing keys change a lot. Key signing keys change. 
They should change about once a year, but they're probably going to end up changing about as often as you change your own personal GPG key or whatever, right? Yep. Uh, I wouldn't say that it has at all. Um, like I said, very few people, I think, in my, in, from what I can tell, very few people are using it at all. And, and in all honesty, um, as I said from the, uh, earlier in the talk, this won't stop an attack in any kind of way. In fact, it will make sure the attack gets to you. Um, uh, because what you're actually saying is, I really, really mean that this is my IP. I mean, I'm proving to you that this is my IP. Go ahead and send that to me, because this is who I am, right? So it's, it's, I don't think it would do anything to stop a malicious attack. But it certainly could stop something like DNS cache forging or man in the middle thing is Thomas. It would still work, yes. If 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 you're if you're uh, you know if if Mallory or Eve is in a network and you have DNSSEC set up and they have a uh, and they've set up a DNSSEC validator, all you're really doing is saying yes, here's my record and yes, that's it's really real. This, I, this is really my IP. But you're talking you're being in an odd situation. And that's it. I mean, the only thing I could think you could do is actually it'd be an advantage to not have it in that case, right? Because then you could you could DNS cache poison your attackers and you can hack back, right? Yeah. I, are you talking about Google? I think you're, is he talking about the BGP problem? Yeah. Well, it was you, oh, oh, and YouTube is on my Google. Okay, that's what I I heard it was Google, so maybe that's what I meant. Okay, um, it, it's it actually. Let me think about that. I, I, no, I guess it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna go to the IP and you're gonna go. To, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Anything else? Uh, okay. If anybody wants to ask me a question offline, I, I might be better at answering when I'm not up with a mic. Sorry. Thanks.